What's up world and welcome to Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan and I'll be your host. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at five amazing Gego plugins. They were created by Linux Beaver. You can download them for free simply by heading on over to github.com slash Linux Beaver. You can find some information about the project itself and to download the plugins, simply scroll down and find your operating system, whether it be Windows, Linux or Mac. For Linux, we also have the Flatpak instructions as well as the Snap instructions. Now, in my case, I'll be downloading the binary files, so the top 20 Gaggle plugins. Now, simply click on the one that corresponds to your operating system. It will download a zip file. Once you've downloaded the zip file and have extracted it, simply copy and paste the SO files or the entire folder itself into the plugins folder as indicated on the website. It is important to note that these plugins do not go inside of the normal plugins folder for GIMP. Instead, pay attention to the directory that is indicated and you'll see that you're looking for the Gego uh, 0.4 plugins folder. For Windows users, you might not have the plugins folder, in which case simply create a folder inside of the Gego 0.4 and name that folder plugins as written right here on the website. From there, you can copy the top Gego plugins folder that you've extracted from the zip and paste it inside of the plugins folder or simply copy the SO files and paste them inside of the folder. Once you're done with that, remember to restart GIMP if it's already running and you'll have the plugins available to you. All right then, let's get started. The first plugin that we'll be looking at is called the SSG, so Shadow, Stroke or Glow. Let's dive right into it. So over here, the first thing I'll do is set my text color to white. Set it to whichever color that works for the project that you're working on. So in my case, I'll simply set it to white. Next up, let's go ahead and grab the Gaggle Operations tool. To access the Gaggle Operations tool, simply go up into your menu bar, go to Tools, and then you have Gaggle Operations. Alternatively, you can also add the Gaggle Operations tool to your toolbox. Simply go up to Edit, down to Preferences, Go to the toolbox over in interface, scroll all the way at the bottom inside of tool configurations and you should see the Gego operations in there. Simply check on the eye icon and it will add it to your toolbox. All right. So in this case, I'll simply grab the Gego operations tool, left click once on the canvas and there we have it. This is the Gego operations menu. We simply have to go in the drop down and we can choose our first plugin, which will be the add stroke shadow or glow SSG. Now the settings here are very straightforward. The first option are the presets. Now this is one of the things I like a lot about um, the Gego operations. It's the ability to have presets so you can repeat previous operations. Next we have the grow shape. By default it will be set to circle and this really determines the endings or the edges of your shape. So the other options would be square which will then give you sharper edges and sharper corners and then we have diamond which will simply give you these cuts on your shapes now for this i will stick to circle next we have the color overlay and this is basically the color of your stroke shadow or glow as you can see here there are some instructions at the top they do recommend making a duplicate of your layer but alternatively you can also simply go down to blending options and switch the mode from replace to normal and this will include the fill of your text. Now, of course, right now the outlines are white and our text is white, so we can't tell them apart. Let's go ahead and change that. All right. Next, we have the coordinates of the stroke. Now, you can see this chain over here, which means that these values are linked. If I were to change one, the other change with it. And in this case, we get a movement that's either lower right or upper left. Simply uncheck the chain and you can now move them separately wherever you want. All right, I'll simply push it down lower right. Next, we have the blur to create shadow or glow. This is very self-explanatory. If you increase this value, you get a blur on the outline, which can serve to create a shadow effect or even a glow effect, as it says it right there. Then we have the grow radius of SSG. So basically how big, how much bigger or smaller do you want the outlines to be or the shadow or glow. After that, we have the make the SSG go inward or outwards. For this one, I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see it. And I'll increase the size or the radius of our stroke, just about here. Now, if we were to drop this to a lower value, 
there's not much that we can tell that happened, but it did expand ever so slightly. Now, if we were to increase this value, you can see now we can see these little gaps here. Let me decrease ever so slightly the radius. And notice how the original text starts to poke out from behind the stroke. Right. You also have the option to overlay an image over the outline. Now, in my case, I won't be using this option. You have certain configurations that you can apply to that image that you overlay, such as blurring it. You can change the U, so the color of it, and the opacity of it. And that's about it. So it's a very straightforward plugin. Again, you can make this into a shadow or a glow effect. Press OK, and we're done. So this was very simple. And note that some of these sliders repeat in the other plugins that we'll be seeing. All right. So the next one that we'll be taking a look at is the layer effects, or rather the layer effects continual. So over here, we have the result for the layer effects continual. This one allows us to create a stroke, a drop shadow, an inner gradient, and even an inner glow effect. And this is how we get this result all within one plugin. So the first thing I would like to point out for the layer effects continual, or even the layer effects, is that the size of the layer itself influences how the plugin responds. So to demonstrate what I mean, I'll left click and I'll grab the layer effects continual. Layer effects and the layer effects continual basically do the same thing except that the continual one adds one extra option. So I'll go with the continual and I'll go to my presets and I'll choose one of my presets that I created and saved. All right. Notice here that we do not have the gradient effect that we had in the previous example that I showed. The reason for this is the size of the layer itself. When I created this preset, the layer was the size of the image. So 1920 by 1080. So let's go ahead and cancel all of this. I'll right click on the layer. I'll go to layer to image size. Left click again. I'll grab my same preset. And there we have the gradient and the inner glow, which is creating this white border inside. Okay. This is because again, it depends on the size of the layer for the gradient part of it, at least. So let's go ahead and see how this one works. First off, of course, we have the presets right under this. We have the filter part that we want to display because inside of the layer effects, we have, or rather the layer effects continual, we have four different effects that we can apply to our image. The first one being outline and shadow. So let's take a look at this. We can overlay a color on our text here. And it only works with white text, as they say. So your text has to be white in order for it to work. I do believe there's an update where you can overlay a color over your text, no matter the color of your text. But that's in the update. So in this particular case, I'll leave the text white. Then we have to enable the outline. Now you can see down here that the outline's color is black, so we won't really see it on this background. So I'll go ahead and change this to a white background. And there you have it. This is the outline. The first slider is the opacity of the outline. Right under this, we have the X and Y position of our outline. So we can shift it around. So a little bit to the left, a little bit down, however you please. Next, we have the grow shape. So this is the same thing as the SSG. So you can go from circle, square, or diamond. We already know this is going to affect the corners and the edges. Then we have the outline blur radius. Again, the same thing as the SSG. Do you want the outline to be blurry? So for this, you have to go to a pretty high value to start seeing the blur. But essentially, they work the same. So I'll drop this back down. Then we have the outline grow radius. Again, same thing. How big or how small do you want the um, outline to be? We have the color of the outline that we can choose. And under that, we have the shadow or glow opacity. So by default, it is set to zero. So simply increase this and you will now have a shadow. Right under that, we also have the coordinates for the position of the shadow. And unlike the position up here, we do have the chain here. So they are linked together. So you move one, the other one moves with it. So already you can see, you can already create some nice effects within a one plugin. Then we have the color of the shadow. Now, one trick is if we go down here, you'll see that we have the blur radius of the shadow. If you drop this all the way down to zero, you get a second outline, if you will. And I'll change this color. Press OK. Now I simply have to change the coordinates to zero and increase the 
radius of our shadow or glow so that it's bigger than the outline and there you have it. So next inside of the filter to be displayed we have bevel and inner glow. Now I won't be touching the bevel but the inner glow if I enable this since the color is set to red here you can see we're getting this red inner glow and this is what I use to create the white outlines on the inside. To do this I simply drop the blur radius significantly so we get sharper edges and then we can control just how big or how small we want this uh, inner glow to be. Again you can use this however it fits your project but I'm just showing you how I got the results that I got. Then we also have the inner glow opacity. I'll leave it as it is for now and of course if I go ahead and switch this to white we're not going to see anything but no worries. We can fix this with the next option on the drop down which is the image file upload and gradient. Now over here you can upload an image and overlay it inside on your solid text. I won't be doing this. You also have a few options for the image that you overlay such as changing the color, the chroma, lightness and the opacity. Now I'm simply going to enable the gradient here. Now for the gradient already you know that the colors are down here. And for the coordinates of the gradient, they can be a little bit tricky to understand. It took me a moment to figure it out. Let's go ahead and look at how it works. Now remember I mentioned that the gradient depends on the size of the layer. With that said, if we look at our layer here, it is 1920 by 1080. So on the X axis, I'm going to put this to 960, which is half of our width. And I'll do the same here for the X coordinate 2, so gradient X1 and gradient X2, or put it to 960. And this will give us a straight line. So it splits it halfway. Next up, for the Y value, so up and down, we simply have to bring them near center, and there we go. They start meeting at the middle. You also have these arrows here to choose the position of your coordinates. Like I said, it is a little tricky. Not too tricky. If you just tweak with it a little bit, you'll get the results that you want. Okay. So I'm going to bring them close to each other so that we don't get such a gradient fall off here. And once I'm satisfied with the position, I'll change the colors. So the top one will be white, just like our text. We could always make it transparent, but I'd rather just put it white. And then I'll choose a gray color for the lower half. Now, a quick note is in order to have the bottom color be at the bottom, the value of the Y2 must be greater than that of Y1. Let me show you. If I make Y1 greater than Y2, it will invert the positions of our colors. All right, just a quick note. All right, so what makes the difference between the layer effects and layer effects continual is the fourth option on the list, which is the special options for outline. Now, we won't be able to see the results for this unless we change the color of our outline here. So I'm going to go to our outline and I'll change this color. Let's go back to special options for outline and enable it. Okay, so right now it's not so visible, so let me increase the depth. And already you can see it is adding a bevel effect to the outline, to the first outline. That's essentially what this third option does. You can also overlay an image here and you have, again, the same options to control the color and the lightness of it. So these are almost self-explanatory. And of course, you can always hover the cursor over the sliders to see if they offer any extra information. So that is it for the layer effects continual and there we have it. Moving on we'll be taking a look at the glossy balloon effect. So this is what we have for the glossy balloon effect and really it is the text here float. So let's go ahead and see how I got this result. Okay so with our text layer selected the first thing we have to do is increase the size of the layer. Now, this is because this one does depend on the size of the layer for the balloon to expand. If our layer is the exact size of the text, our balloon will get cut off. With that said, we don't have to make the layer the size of the entire image. So for this, I'll use the crop tool. I'll make sure to check on current layer only and allow growing. And now I can simply increase just this layer, press enter, return, and there we have it. Now I can grab the Gecko operations tool, left click, and in our drop down, we are going to go for glossy balloon text generation. Glossy balloon. 
already we can see our balloonification if you will again the same options to create presets which is something i really like so this is what i did for this effect right here all right let's take a look at the sliders the first one is balloonification of text you can already imagine that this controls just how balloon your text is if you lower the value you get less balloon but still it is a nice result how this works is it's simply i'm just going to go with the term uh, it's going to balloonify the edges of your text and the more you increase this the more the balloon inflates closer and closer towards the center of your text all right then we have color rotation which you can already imagine just hover the cursor over it and it allows you to change the color of your balloon All right, next we have lightness. Now, lightness is already self-explanatory. It's going to control how bright or how dark your balloon is. So I'll leave it pretty bright. I'm cool with that. Then we have the desaturation of image file uploaded. If I drop this, it will desaturate the color of our balloon. If you upload an image, such as a pattern of fruit or cocktails or flamingos or so that you want to overlay over your balloon, then you could also control the saturation of that image right there and finally we have this slider down here you can see slide up to remove transparency puff around edges increase this and you'll see that the edges become sharper on your balloon decrease this and you're getting more of a blur let me zoom in here so we really see this let's increase sharper decrease a little bit of a blur all right and finally i'll show you a little neat trick that i found is if you go down to the blending options and you switch from replace to let's say behind your original text will get overlaid over your balloon and you can create a very nice result with this all right anyways let me switch back to replace press ok and there we have it very simple very beautiful from there you can add your drop shadow etc and have fun with it. All right, next up, we're going to be looking at text stone or rather stone text. Yes, stone text two. Here is the result that we have for it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, here we have our text. We don't actually have to change the size of the layers for this plugin. Uh, I haven't noticed any differences with using the original size or increasing it other than slightly making it heavier maybe. Now my text is already set to a rocky-ish color for what I'm going for. Then we can grab our Giggle Operations 2, left click, and in the drop down, we're now looking for Rock Text 2, Rock Text 2. All right, now at first glance, this is not the most rocky result we could get, but let's get started. At the top here, we have some instructions on how to use this plugin, and right under, we have again the presets. Now I have my space rocks down here. Let me go ahead and enable this for you. You can see the settings, the values that I use for this one. I have this set to overlay and I also have an image for texture, All right? So let's reset out of this and take a look at the different sliders. So rockification, horizontal or vertical. So let's decrease both of these down to zero. And this is what you get, a smooth text that's a bit beveled and extruded towards the back, that's about it. And as you increase these values, you start getting that rock texture here, for example, horizontally, and you do the same vertically, and you start adding a bit more shape to your rocks. Simple as that. Next, we have the random seed. You can generate new seeds, which for example, we generate a seed here. Okay, and you'll get different results as you generate new seeds. I'll set this back to zero. Then we have the blend mode for internal emboss. Uh, for me, I'll simply set it to overlay. Now, whichever works best for what you're working with, but I like the original color I had in the back and I only want a subtle change, if you will. Then we have the bevel depth. And you can see in parentheses, it says it very clearly, make darker. If I decrease this value, notice it becomes ever so slightly lighter and you increase, it becomes darker. Then we have the internal Gaussian blur, uh, fatness of bevel. If you decrease this value, you start getting sharper edges all over, all right? For the internal box blur, it's how smooth do you want these crevices, I suppose? In my case, a value of two works just fine. You can get more rocky edges if you want by simply lowering the internal Gaussian. 
we have the radius, low, smaller, large, bigger. So it, you get some explanations, but essentially you lower the value, your text starts, or your rocks start to uh, shrink, if you will, increase the value and your rocks will grow, right? Uh, median alpha percentile, so wideness control. This one, I'm not too sure. Again, you can always tweak them a bit, but it seems to be controlling the, the very edges to some degree. And for the second one, so essentially I can see what it's doing, but I, I'm not sure how to explain what it's doing. And then we have the color overlay. Now they let you know that this uses multiply blend mode. Uh, with this, you could use it to add a, a small tint, a different color tint to your text. For example, let's say you wanted this slight minty green added to it. You can see it's overlaying over it, or you could use it to change the color completely. Right, we switch to blue, we're getting this very dark blue, multiply blue on it. All right, so I'll just cancel all of this. I'll stick to white, it works for me. We have the lightness to darkness meter. So it's controlling a bit of the lightness or darkness in its own way. Then of course we have the image overlay. You can overlay an image texture over your text and then you can use the lightness to darkness meter to control how it's affecting your text really. So this is where this slider might become more useful if you're using a texture. This is the texture that I'm using to overlay over my text. All right, so moving on, we have the angle of extrusion. You can control it through this little slider here or through the graphical representation, if you will, and choose which direction you want your text to be extruded in. In my case, I'll have it aim towards the center, so down, so we have the length of the extrusion. So how much do you want to extrude this? And then of course we have the darkness to lightness of extrusion. And this is how dark do you want the extruded port to be or how light? And there we have it. So we can go ahead and press OK. And the nice thing about this is now I can grab my second text, go into the Gego operations, go down to my rock text two, go to the presets, use the last use settings, which will give me the same results that we have up here. And all I have to do is change the extrusion here to negative 90. So it goes up, press OK, and we're done. All right, so that was a very simple one as well. Again, they're all simple, easy to use, very intuitive. And finally, last but not least, we'll be looking at the custom bevel. Here is the result created with the custom bevel. And it is a lot more simpler than you'd think. So let's go here and break it down first. I added a image texture to it. So if I remove the texture, you can see this is what we're looking at. This is what we're working with. And I also have the version without the drop shadow. You can see it looks a lot flatter. The bevel in of itself is step one. Step two is uh, for you to make it look the way you want it to look. And it's a very straightforward plugin as well. So let's get started. So first things first, I'll change this text to white. So I'll simply grab the white, drag it over. Now we can go into the Gecko operations and we have bevel up here, but what we're going to be working with is custom bevel down here. You get a bit of information on this plugin up here. Then we have our presets again. I have my G bevel options right here. You can already see the settings that I'm working with. I did not overlay the image from inside of the bevel. Rather, I used a blend mode over the image itself, over the letter itself. And that's how I added the image texture. So I'll zoom in here and again, all of these are almost self-explanatory. You have the internal Gaussian blur, internal box blur. You know, the more blur you add, the smoother some things are going to look, the less blur, the sharper things get. If you hover the cursor over these, you do get some information about them. Up here, you have the edge puff. So if I disable this, this will be more, you get solid edges, whereas when it's enabled, this is how I was able to sell the effect that this G is bumping out from the metal by adding the texture to it and by using this uh, edge puff, if you will. Now the azimuth, if you hover the cursor over it, you'll see it simply says light angle, right, in degrees. And so you can choose where the light is coming from. Let me zoom out here so we can see this better. So where do you want the light to be coming from and where are the shadows going to be cast? We have the elevation. The elevation makes it either darker or lighter from what I can tell. We have the depth, 
which again says make darker, but once you start playing with it, you start to see what it's doing exactly. So how sharp or the depth of it really. Uh, internal median blur radius. This one, I haven't figured out exactly what it's doing, but I know it puffs it up or shrinks it down a bit. Which I'm still not sure what it does. But despite not knowing what all of these sliders do, you can still get great results and you can always go back and tweak some of them and experiment and discover what they're doing. And then we have the internal Gaussian blur again, which will make it either sharper or a lot uh, rounded, uh, more uh, soft, if you will. If you disable this, you can get sharper results. So by lowering anything that says blur, you're going to get sharper and sharper results. Then of course the sharpen is how sharp do you want it to look, like the unsharp mask, you could say. You can also overlay the an image over it. Like I said, I did not overlay an image. I simply did it um, in the layer stack. You can control the properties of the image that you choose to overlay by desaturating it, controlling the lightness and brightness and the colors of it. It all depends on what you're going for, of course. And that's really it. Then I just added a drop shadow and the texture, etc, etc. Press OK, and there you have it. Alright then, that is it for these amazing Gego plugins. Now, if you're interested in learning some more about GIMP, I have a GIMP class on Skillshare, which will take you from absolute beginner to intermediate in no time. You can get one free month of Skillshare by signing up using the link down in the description. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, doubt, or suggestions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. If you learned anything in this video or if you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It helps a lot. If you did not like it, there is a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? But seriously, if something did bother you or so, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. This is Nux Tux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan, and I'll see you next time.